going to give you lots of data that's going to share a lot of insights about these two different landscapes. First of all, on the one side, you have Saudi, which is two and a half times smaller in population than Iran, but has five times the GDP per capita. But keep in mind, Iran's as a currency valuation, particularly, has slumped by a factor of four during the past several years of sanctions, and is anticipated by many, including myself, to perhaps recover to that level within as little as two years. Iran is also not dependent on oil revenues like Saudi, so don't be surprised if you see uh, the two economies pull a switcheroo in the longer term. While over two thirds of Iranians used to use Facebook just two, uh, I guess, two or three years ago, this figure is now only about one third. More than. I guess 30, 40 percent are now even increasingly using Instagram. The figure now is 50 percent on our latest survey. Of course, Facebook owns that, but uh, you can see the drastically changing uh, um, behavior of social media users in Iran. Saudi is the second biggest market of Snapchat users in the world and has the highest ratio of views per user on YouTube. There's about 30% iOS users in Saudi and half that in Iran, which is closer to Turkey in its Android makeup. For Iran, however, low incomes, on top of the fact that the app store has never really reliably functioned in the market, are the main reasons of why Apple has such a low share. In Saudi, Apple makes roughly two-thirds of the revenues, which is typical of most markets around the world, even though Android represents the majority of the market. So, I'm not sure. I mean, put your hands up if you know Newzoo. It's a, basically a game stats company. I, I don't see a single hand up, but it's a very popular, very big company owned by App Annie. Who knows App Annie? Okay, so App Annie owns Newzoo and they publish the best stats of global country performance of games. Um, so based on those calculations, I've projected that the games market in Saudi is around 350 million this year, and Iran is set to make 220 as well. So pretty good overall in comparison. PC and console games represents the lion's share of revenues. Um, in Iran, there's a lot of piracy going on. And no one really knows that because it feels like something 10 years ago in most markets, but it's mostly because there's barely any official distributors in the, in the country. Like for example, Apple or game guys like Nintendo and so on don't actually appear there. And the rating agency named Esra, it's like the same authority that would put PG-13 or rated R on games. It actually in Iran encourages the piracy and profits from the piracy, if you can believe it. Um, but there's a lot of factors that are going to push out piracy much sooner than you think, like access to multiplayer, which only original copies or versions of games can offer. In fact, 35% of mobile gamers in Iran play on Steam. Put your hand up if you know Steam. Yes, okay, good. And next-gen consoles like the PS4 are impossible to rip off so far. Mobile games represents one-third of total games revenue in Saudi, which is fairly close to the global trend. In Iran, mobile games is a little bit lower. It's like one quarter of the total. The lower share, of course, reflects the lack of presence of the official app stores in Iran. But more importantly, it's the immaturity of the payment methods, which leaves a lot of room for innovations like fintech to jump in. So like I said before, uh, the revenue split in Saudi between the app store and Google Play is pretty standard. Iran's market, on the other hand, consists mostly of third-party Android app stores like Cafe Bazaar. Well, uh, I believe they reported about 28 million active installs to date. The highest revenue estimates I can muster up in, in lieu of a lack of transparency from these companies is that mobile games revenue in Iran is somewhere between 30 to 35 million. So I ran a joint survey of mobile gamers in both countries in parallel so that we can start to compare the demographics side by side. Both were conducted in January, and although um, both were conducted in January and the sample size for Saudi is, is even more than twice that of Iran, the truth is that we really, really overdid it there, and that a sample size of, in my opinion, five to 700 mobile gamers in either market is enough to draw some good, um, good comparisons and, and good estimations of how they behave. Half of Saudis right here, you'll see,
play mobile games several times a day versus two-thirds of Iranians. So gamers from both countries obviously have a lot of time to kill, but of course Saudi wins in terms of disposable cash, as you'll see shortly. 10% of Saudis play sev uh, three hours per day or more, compared to 19% of Iranians. So duration of gameplay amongst this hardcore segment in Iran is twice that of Saudi. I should point out that two-thirds of mobile gamers in Iran are students. In Saudi, unemployment is super high, but for the female gamers only. And that's mostly, I believe, a cultural thing. Here's the top four favorite genres in both countries. Saudi is similar to the rest of the world, except for the fact that strategy games isn't ranked in the top three, as I would have expected. While Iran has a pretty strange mix and a disproportionate fanaticism towards football-related games. Case in point is that the fifth most visited site in the country is about football news. You can search it, it's called varzeshseh.com. Top influences that get people to basically, you know, download and test new game titles is pretty much the same, except for the fact that the third top influence in Saudi is social media, top left, and in Iran, it's news articles. So this harbors back to the usual observation of Iranians as huge producers and consumers of blogging content and as having a very strong drive to dig and devour information firsthand. In terms of paid downloads, or in terms of payment, paid downloads in games, the ones where I guess a few years ago you might have gone and downloaded ang uh, Angry Birds or something for a dollar or two dollars. Well anyways, paid downloads in games has been on a downward dive globally for the past few years as the freemium or free to play model rose to popularity. Saudi totally falls on suit to this, while one third of gamers in Iran, this is still popular to download and pay for games at the same time. The freemium model is dominant in both countries, hands down. Uh, if you check out the App Annie rankings for Saudi Arabia, you'll notice that most of the top games, like Clash of Clans or more recently Clash Royale uh, by Supercell, are doing similarly well in Western markets. They'll basically respond to in-app ads, for example, in the same way as other global audiences, but Saudis pay ridiculously higher amounts on a, on a monthly basis. In Iran, in-app ads aren't uh, attractive to publishers for the simple reason that the digital ads industry is still in its infancy, so it doesn't pay out much. Over one-third of Saudis, as you see right here, are basically spend making in-app purchases each month, which really highlights the fact that this market is a veritable whale's den, which in the gaming industry means it has a high concentration of high-spending gamers. Iran, is, Iran performs fairly well relative to global peers, especially if you take into account what I said about its current GDP and future projections of its economy rebounding. Saudi's in-app spending reflects their craze for dishing out cash. Uh, I don't even want to point out the obviousness of some of these figures. 11% um, spending you know, 50 to 100 dollars, 4 percent spending over, between 100 and 500. I mean, these are ridiculous by any standards. And if I compare that between male and female, which I haven't done here, there's actually not much of a big difference. Female gamers in Saudi are a, are a force to be reckoned with. In Iran, they do fairly well. They have their particular own mix of concentrated spenders, but most gamers there, as you see right here, are not spending much. They're spending very low sums and which is representative of what they have in their pockets to spend. This dynamic drastically improves, however, if publishers, developers adapt their, you know, uh, pricing to Iran's economy. They can easily use, uh, I see one researcher here, so they can use like the research method of discrete choice analysis to determine what those pricing sweet spots are. An interesting point to note here about Saudi is that <laughs> half of iOS users in Saudi don't even use the Middle East App Store. This, in my more, I guess in my opinion, more tech-savvy half, prefer to use the US and other foreign app stores because they offer a non-sanitized experience. So App Annie can only tell you half the story of iOS users in Saudi. 
I actually published an article on VentureBeat about this exact phenomenon, and it was taken down 10 hours later because, uh, I mean, I guess the PR guys who work for App Annie sent a lot of emails. I couldn't get it up there, but Wanda republished it. You can find it there. In Iran, I mean, it mostly consists of third-party app stores, but it's generally a blind spot for global tracking tools. And we can only make rough estimates because third-party app stores like Cafe Bazaar offer us very little visibility. So Saudi is a relatively normal market. And Iran is somewhat estranged or continues to be somewhat estranged to the outside world. Local app stores in Iran abide strictly to government regulations and do not deviate. So while both markets are Islamic states, you can get away with many things in Saudi nowadays, while in Iran you cannot. For example, the degree of sensuality in, in the creative assets. So obviously, female characters uh, being a little too sexualized. I, I, I think we can never ever work with Asian publishers and developers because they have like some kind of fetish towards that particular theme. Um, or, or the game script, referencing spirituality, right? Those things are not black and white situations in Saudi anymore. While they most definitely and certainly are in Iran. So, in, in Saudi, I mean, if anyone tells you it's a mysterious or esoteric market, they're trying to take some of your money or, I don't know, impress you, or they just plainly don't understand the market. I recommend you apply the same approach in terms of marketing and anything else in terms of that market. Um, except put some extra love placed on social media influencers like Saudi Gamer on YouTube. As you saw in a previous slide, social media is a key channel there. In Iran, go local PR and ad networks so you appear in the right channels. But you don't have much sway unless you have a local presence or work with a partner that operates inside the country. Offline marketing in both markets is completely off limits, more or less, unless you either incorporate or offer licensing to a local partner or figure out how to otherwise jump over the bureaucratic hoops imposed by either government. So that's my email. And please feel free to shoot me over any email uh, questions you might have. Happy to answer. Thank you.